First 20 bucks buys this for the tribe. 20. You just made a lot of people very happy. I can have them all myself if I want. For the tribe. Okay. Frandy. I don't want to thank you. I could you sure? possibly. Thank you. you sure, Sugar? Maddie's Sugar? getting it. It's, it's not yours to give to Maddie. I'm the boss. Last chance, you can have a full one. Thank you. Randy offers Sugar his own cookie. She takes it and gives it to Maddie. Yeah, would you like to repeat that? Wow. I think it worked out the way it worked out. Sugar, she can kiss my ass. If she thinks I was bad before, I'm just going to turn it up a notch. There's a lot of fight left in this dog. The only reason I took his damn cookie is because he didn't want to give me a cookie. He wanted to give everybody a cookie but Sugar because Sugar's evil. Oh boy, the first season of Survivor in high definition is also possibly the biggest mess of a season of all time. How big of a mess, you might ask? Well, Jeff Probst nearly quit the show and was only convinced to stay on by becoming an executive producer. Well, 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 that will change the course of Survivor. But is this season any good? Let's find out. Number one, the thematic twist. Gabon is pitched as Earth's last Eden and after back-to-back -back seasons of James telling us not to bite the apple, it's fitting that we go to the place which directly references that. Gabon is gorgeous, but the theme of the season is not as much Earth's last Eden as it is really letting the players pick their own tribes for the fourth time in the show's history, and it directly copies how Thailand does this by having the oldest man and oldest woman picking their own tribes. No one should be copying anything about Thailand, especially that twist. And this time, the tribes are very much uneven, similar to Palau and Fiji. Who would have saw this happening? But it does lead to constant hilarity. Never again will Survivor do this exact twist. And frankly, that's a good thing, as I am 99% sure the way this plays out here cannot be topped in terms of a character-driven train wreck, which is, of course, never what the show wants, but it is what it needed, in my opinion. The thematic twist for Survivor Gabon against the show's will scores an 8 out of 10. By the way, do you want to pick what videos I make and watch them all up to six months early? Then join so many others over on Patreon. You can sign up and cancel at any time. And if you do join for a year, you get a 15% discount. Link in the description. Thank you for your support. Number two, production quality. I was a little depressed, but I got a lot of time here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for my own little safari. When I came to Africa, I came here to experience not only Survivor, but sort of learn about myself, to really think about how lucky a person I am, what a wonderful family I have. It takes your breath away. I see why they call it the Garden of Eden. We are now in high definition and wow, what a world of difference this makes. Sure, it's true, I AI upscaled seasons 15 and 16 for my videos, but nothing quite compares to the real thing, especially in widescreen. The location of Gabon is beautiful, the challenges are varied and interesting, and I never imagined Survivor doing its own version of golf, and that resulting in one of the greatest fights in the show's history. However, Exile Island this season, while visually interesting and a cool concept, was kind of a complete waste after episode 2 due to them not planting any more idols there. Very similar to Cook Islands, and despite going to HD, everything here looks yellow. As if the person color correcting didn't know how to give the show its natural look, or it's as if the cameras didn't film everything correctly, or it was a creative choice, but it's a weird choice. I try to do my own color correction to make it look better, but without the source footage, I'm kind of hamstrung. The storytelling of the season does a great job on focusing on the fun stuff, and aside from maybe one secret scene that I saw, nothing cut from the show would make it better. For Survivor Gabon, the production quality scores an 8 out of 10. Number 3, Strategic Play. Susie, I have one question for you, and if you can answer yes to this question, I will give you my million dollar vote. If you get the money, will you agree to have your vocal cords removed? <laughs> Sugar, you are an unemployed, uneducated leech on society, and the only thing I would vote to give you is a handful of antidepressants so that no one else has to be subjected to your constant crying anymore. And maybe if you got some, then it would seem a little more sincere when you are crying about your dead father. You don't deserve the million. All three of you, kiss my... I mean, Randy kind of says it all. The strategy this season was pretty garbage. And yes, that includes the golden boy Marcus who threw an idol into the ocean thinking his Coda alliance was about to bulldoze the Fong tribe and he would be handed a win. And he would have been, had there not been the fake merge. Once again, copying Thailand, though this time I think it was executed better, the fake merge here 
actually help the season. Wow. But aside from the Susie flip on Marcus and Bob's fake idol, there isn't much to talk about in terms of good strategy or progressing the strategy of the show. Truly, most decisions this season seem to be made on an emotional basis and not a strictly strategic basis. And while this will hurt the score given for this section, it doesn't make it bad, just not as important as other elements. The strategy here at times can be baffling if that's what you're focused on. I suggest not focusing on strategy. It's not great. It's mostly just silly. I give the strategic play of Survivor Gabon a 3 out of 10. Number 4, The Characters. Hey you guys, if anybody finds any elephant dung, bring it back, it burns well. Oh, elephant dung. There are elephants around because there was elephant dung that we walked over. So you want to see the elephant dung? Oh, really? Well, it's very interesting. Look. Yeah. We've been here 20 minutes and she wants elephant. They poop out the seeds that they don't digest. And we were wondering maybe there might be something edible inside store. Oh, don't you, even think oh, about you that. You first. This is our first day. And I've come to the conclusion that Jillian is annoying. No, you can. You can squeeze the elephant dog well. and drink it. She is so busy at just trying to look busy and she's not accomplishing crap. Do you like villains? Well, if you want to enjoy the characters of Survivor China, I mean Micronesia, I mean Gabon, whoa, deja vu. This season we have Randy, Crystal, Corinne, Sugar, Kenny, Ace, and in some ways Marcus and Charlie, who are all villains and all get a good amount of screen time. Sugar is a hero to many due to the solo content we get with her, but when you look at how she interacts with her tribe and not what she does in confessionals or on exile, you realize quickly, Sugar's a villain to everyone else on this season. The only heroes here are Maddie, Jillian, and Bob. And even then, Bob tricked multiple people with fake idols. Is that a hero? There are so many times this season that will either have you scratching your head, laughing out loud, or hiding your hands in your face. It isn't boring, but in some ways it doesn't feel like a progressive survivor in the same ways that we just saw them do in seasons 13, 15, and 16. But with everyone being so salty and taking things so personal, it is a joy to watch for me. As always, the character score gets twice the weight and the characters here score a perfect 10 out of 10. Number five, the winner. I'm gonna do something. My plan is to make something that looks like an idol. I found something that looked like a skull. So I took the resin that I found in one of the trees, glued the front of it with resin, and then taken knickknacks that I've found around. This is my new fake idol. I potentially have a, an idol that could threaten somebody else in the tribe. It's sort of like when you're holding up a bank. You don't necessarily need a gun. If they think you got a gun, they might leave you alone. Bob is a tale of two halves. The first half of the game, he's on the winning tribe where he is inconsequential to the story and the strategy, but the second half becomes him overcoming the odds as an underdog. He is down in the numbers. He wins five individual challenges, three of those being for immunity, and all that at 57 years old. Him and his wife are incredibly adorable, and the way he navigated being an underdog cannot be understated. However, like all winners, he did screw up a few times, namely with Kenny and the necklace. And of course, as a winner, he needed a stroke of luck, and he got a big one at the final four. Because when Susie wins that Final Four immunity, Bob should be voted off. But Sugar was playing a very emotional game and that helped him. And then at Final Tribal Council, he basically had all four codas on the jury in the bag, just as long as he didn't tell them off. I like Bob, but his win is not that impressive despite being the oldest winner of all time. Bob's winning game and story gets a 6 out of 10. Randy. You know what I got to say about Randy? So is Survivor Gabon worth watching? I would say it's only worth watching if you like seeing people play emotional and you enjoy big characters. If you're more into strategy and progressing the game as a game, then move along. Gabon is visually beautiful and a breath of fresh air from all the beach seasons. Plus the challenge variety is awesome, but no one is lauding this season for a strategy just for its hilarious situations. For me, Survivor Gabon's overall score is a 7.5 out of 10. Tune in next time as we jump to the controversial Survivor Samoa. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.